Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. Galatians 6, 9 tells us not to grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap what we sow if we faint not. It's so important that we remain stable and steady during the difficult seasons of life. An extraordinary life will always require extraordinary determination. Join me for part one of the message titled, Stay With It. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. I'm going to make this tonight a simple message. You like messages that are simple? Well, this is going to be simple. So I'm just praying and waiting on the Lord. And I just felt like this phrase came to me tonight. Just stay with it. Stay with it. You say, stay with what? Stay with it, whatever you're doing, wherever you're being faithful, whatever God's called you to do, just stay with it. Nothing happens unless you stay with it. How many know it's easy to start some type of diet plan? The challenge isn't starting a diet plan. The challenge is staying with a diet plan. The challenge isn't starting anything. It's not starting a family. You know, starting a family. I mean, they're going to have a baby shower, and people are going to give you gifts, and people are going to celebrate, and people come see you in the hospital, and nurses, they prepare you meals. And boy, I tell you, this this is just going to be a cakewalk. And then after a little while, you realize that cakewalk is over with, and That's when you have to stay with it. Stay with it. Whatever it is the Lord's put in your heart to do, whatever the Lord's called you to do, you can't just be faithful for a week or a month, two months, three months. You can't be faithful for a year, two years, three years. You have to be faithful unto death. You have to be faithful unto death and to the end of your life. Jesus said, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. It's a picture of just keep following me right up until your death. You know, as I was praying today, it was just like that statement came to me, stay with it, that I'm just here tonight to talk to you and tell you that there's good things that you've started in your life. There's things that are in your heart to do and things that you feel like the Lord's led you to do, instructed you to do, but you got to keep putting one foot in front of another. You just got to keep walking by faith instead of by sight. See, the number one thing that stops us from doing what we're supposed to do is we start going by our feelings. We start going by what it seems like. We start going by what it feels like. But see, I've learned this, that your feelings can be fickle. Your feelings can be, maybe you didn't sleep well last night. Maybe you're tired, your spirit, soul, body. But that doesn't mean that you're not doing the will of God. You know, there's been times that I've thought my sermon was a total disaster. And somewhere or another, I went back and listened to it, and I thought, well, yeah, that wasn't that bad. It wasn't really that bad. Because, see, if it's God's Word, God's Word doesn't return void. And sometimes I think maybe we think we're not being effective whenever God says, actually, you are being effective. Sometimes we question whether or not we're really moving the needle in Him. Am I making an impact in the world? But here's how it happens. You just have to be faithful to God and stay with whatever it is that God's put in your heart to do. And like I said, you're not going to see it all flip-flop overnight. It happens daily, but it doesn't always happen in a day. It happens nightly, but it doesn't always happen overnight. You just have to keep being faithful. You just have to keep doing what you know the Lord's called you to do. And sometimes you can be doing the right thing, but you're not seeing anything changing circumstantially. And so what people do was, well, they'll convince themselves by saying, well, if I was doing what was right, then everything would be different. That's not always the case because, see, there's a seed, time, and harvest. There's times that you're watering seed. There's sometimes you're just nurturing that crop. It's not time to harvest the crop yet. It's just seed, time, and harvest. And so you're having to just be faithful in those seasons of your life. So this evening, I do have a word that I think is for you, okay? By that, I mean, I think I got something that's for you. I know you're thinking, well, so-and-so needs to hear this. Well, maybe you need to hear this. 
there's two different kinds of sermons you're going to hear. Some of them are at need and some of them are pre-need. At need means you need it right now. Pre-need means it hasn't developed to where you really need it, but hold on to it because the week's not over yet. And I'm not trying to be a pessimist. I'm just being realistic that Jesus himself, while he was in the earth, he was very optimistic, but he also said in this world you're going to have tribulation. He weaved in the realism and the optimism all in one verse. In this world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So he blended those two worlds together. And that's the way we live our life. We're not expecting it to be a cakewalk. Does that make sense? If it were a cakewalk, everybody would be doing it because everybody wants the cake, right? But Jesus didn't say that. He said it's a narrow road. Now, narrow road doesn't always have to be hard road, but it does mean narrow road. It means you're going to have to be determined that I'm going to stay on the straight and narrow and do what the Lord wants me to do. I'm praying, and I felt like I heard this go through my heart several times. Just stay with it. Stay with it. And so I just put together some scriptures that have to do with this idea of staying with it. And here's the first one. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse number 10. It says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Put your heart into wherever you're at. One of the greatest temptations can be for us not to be where our shoes are, for us to be somewhere other than where we're presently at. Emotionally, we're disconnected. We're not really given all that we can give to where we're at right now. You know, I have a friend of mine that's a painter, and he's painted for many years, and he told me that there was a lady not too long ago that came out and saw him working, and it was a big job, and he was painting, and she said, wow, how do you do this? How in the world can you just do this? He says, well, it's just one stroke at a time. You just paint one bit at a time. You don't do the whole side of the house at once. You do a portion of it, another portion, another portion, but then by the end of the week, you've done a lot of work. And that's the way it is with the kingdom of God. Sometimes when we're moving forward, it doesn't seem like we're making a big splash or we're making a big difference, but just stay faithful. You'll be surprised what you can do for the Lord if you'll spend the rest of your life serving the Lord. We're not in this thing like for the next week and then we're going to do something else. We're in this till death. Till death do us part. We're just in it. So the Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom. In other words, the time to get stuff done is now. Now, there is life beyond the grave, and there's stuff for us to do for the Lord beyond the grave. But what lays up eternal rewards is right now. So be faithful to the Lord right now, whatever you're at, wherever you're at. Well, I don't like this particular job. This particular job is building the resume for your next job. What you learn now, you can roll over to the future. What you learn now, you're going to need down the road because God's plan for our life is a graduated curriculum. Whatever you're learning now, God's going to pull on that a year from now. Whatever you hear in your spirit, learning to develop your spirit man, learning to hear from God, those are things that you're going to be able to use down the line. So nothing works unless you work at it. Nothing works. You know, I got garden tools. I got a lawnmower, pretty good lawnmower. But you know, that lawnmower doesn't work unless I work. I got a weed eater. It's a pretty good weed eater. But you know, that weed eater doesn't work unless I work. My point is this, is that nothing works unless you work at it. Notice another good scripture that goes along with this theme, stay with it. It says in Galatians chapter 6 in verse number 9, let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So don't grow weary in doing good. You know what people get weary in? They get weary in doing the right thing. They get weary in planting seeds. They get weary in sharing the gospel. They get weary in living a moral life, a godly life. And they say, does it really matter? It really does matter. And the Amplified says, let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint and acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we will reap if we do not loosen or relax our courage 
and faint. You have to do what you do to an audience of one. You know, sometimes I think we forget, really, even if you're blessing someone on some level, they're not even your audience. You're doing everything you do as unto the Lord. And so that way, if that person doesn't reciprocate or if that person never says thank you, if that person doesn't act appreciative for what we've done, it's okay. Because you know what? I was doing what I did unto the Lord. And so that kind of keeps your balance and it keeps you balanced in life. You know, what I want to emphasize to you tonight is you can get weary in doing the right thing. In other words, you're really doing the right thing. You're not doing the wrong thing. You're actually doing the right thing. But you can get weary. And you know what? We usually get weary is when we don't feel like we're being effective. We don't feel like it's really making a difference. Does it really matter? And you start thinking, well, what's the use here? And you start getting weary, but you're doing something good. Now, you heard me say this last week, and I'll say it again. I'll promise you this. The Apostle Paul, when he wrote prison epistles, he's in prison, and he's writing letters to the church at Philippi. He had no idea that 2,000 years later that his letters would be read all around the world. He had no idea that there would be this thing called the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. That would be the fourth largest museum in all of the D.C. area. That would attract a million people the first year it opens up. And people primarily would be there to learn about God's word, but particularly about the writings of this man named the Apostle Paul. So what am I saying? You know, there's things that you're doing. You don't know what impact you're having a thousand years from now. Why do I say that? Because people live forever. The people you touch, the people that you minister to, the people that you care about, they go into eternity. And it's important that we reach people for for all eternity. You know, sometimes I read obituaries to see. And even here in town, there's funeral homes. I'll scan their websites just to see the obituary. I've been in this city for a long time and I know a lot of people and I think, okay, maybe there's some people that have passed away that I just want to be aware of for their family. But the thing I realized, you can go back five years and look at somebody's obituary. That person's still alive. They're either with the Lord or they're in hell. You can go back 10 years. You can go to the cemetery and you can see a date of death that is from 1899. That person is still alive in the sense they don't cease to exist. People don't cease to exist when they die. They just roll over into an eternity with God or an eternity separated with God, which is hell, which is torment night and day forever and ever. What is on the line here is really important. People are really important. And you may be reaching a person and you may be doing the right thing, but then you start getting discouraged in the process and the devil shuts you down. It's something that could make the difference between heaven or hell in the life of another person. Thanks for joining me for today's broadcast. Proverbs 28 tells us that a faithful man will abound with blessings. God invites us to do greater things for his kingdom once we've learned the importance of doing small things greatly. Wherever you're serving the Lord today, I encourage you to remain faithful to him. Remember, it's the small things of life that determine the big things. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.